What about now? <laughs> Did that work? Should we should we redo the intro? Should we redo the intro? Or should we Music just Music works, no mics. Or should we just like just keep this to ourselves? We'll just yeah, we'll just keep talking. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Once I get like a con confirmation that you can actually hear our audio. <laughs> I don't know why that actually didn't work. But once we get confirmation, can you hear us everybody? <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone in the chat now at this point saying oh, I like I can probably just go live. And... Okay, yes. Okay, people are saying yes. Uh, cause there was like a 20 second delay. We're going to, we're going to pretend like this never happened. <laughs> all right. You know how live goes. This never happened. Uh, we'll see this in a couple seconds. Happened. We're going to, this is live, right? So give us a second. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 410 of Ginger Runner Live. We have a wonderful episode tonight because we get to chat with Kim. Me. Yeah. Yay. You did a big thing this weekend. I did something. Yeah. Kim did the 32 hours of hamster, a two and a half mile loop, 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 loop after loop after loop. And you set some new PRs. You podiumed. Mm -hmm. A lot to talk about with you. Yeah. It's going to be super fun. So sit back, relax, everyone. Ginger Runner Live begins now. Ginger Runner. Yay! <laughs> Welcome everyone to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 410. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy Tuesdays to spend a little bit of it with us. Had some technical difficulties there at the beginning. Figured it out. Don't know why it happened. Honestly, don't know what happened, but and we got to figure it out. I mean, Heather Reed says, we were just admiring the new signage and didn't notice you were talking. Sign looks great. I think the sign looks fantastic. Yeah. We've been waiting on this. If you are a GR crew member or Daily Brew frequenter, we do our daily live stream. We've been talking about this and showing some behind the scenes looks at this for the last seven, eight months or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we finally got it done. It's up on the wall. It's lit and it works. Is it lit? Come on now. <laughs> None of that. Uh, we have an exciting show tonight because we get to chat with the one and only Kim Tashima Newberry. That is you. Hi. How are you? Doing well. You had a big weekend. It's it feels this feels weird it feels weird because i'm like usually saying hi i'm to kim shima newberry come say hi in the chat and you have to have questions for our guests ask them there yeah um we do this every day we do daily brew yeah. where it's just kim and i kind of chatting about whatever this is rare that we get to do a gr live where it's just us two which is kind of fun but we talked about it and we thought it would be a great chance to one catch up with you kind of find out where you've been for the last uh, a couple of years with training and racing because yeah. this is your first race that you did in the, since 2019. Yep. Uh, but there's a lot to cover in just the idea of doing a loop-based race and some stories. You have tons of questions already from the GR crew and the Discord server and stuff like that. So we're going to talk a lot with you tonight. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Before we <laughs> uh, introduce our guest, <laughs> we do have some individuals that we like to thank at the top of every Ginger Runner Live episode, and that is the GR crew. It is because yes. of them that we're able to do this live, we do our daily live streams, our reviews, our movies, our trail-tested videos, all of that because of our GR crew. If you would like to join the crew, all you got to do is head on over to patreon.com slash the Ginger Runner. All tiers get access to some super fun perks, including tonight's after show and our daily Day, our daily brew daily live stream that we do uh you get to find out about stuff like this mm -hmm. that happens behind the scenes and it's it's super fun uh so consider joining the crew if you have not already one individual in particular at that top tier we mentioned at the top of every ginger Runner live episode you might be familiar with the name brian sands mm -hmm. big shout out to brian uh longtime supporter but he supports all things ultra and trail running so many different creators he uh supports in this community he supports and he's just a wonderfully inspiring dude we really really appreciate you brian and and thank you so much for the continued support um are you ready for the show i'm ready i am multitasking you're right pulling now see now this is <laughs> i guess this is sort of the detriment i might have to take over for oh, question no, pulling fine. i think this will be more i think this will be a more casual show not yeah. that grl is ever like like <laughs> highs and up. Uh, but I think this would be more like a daily brew, although we are yeah. both wearing button up. 
That's rare. <laughs> um, for those of you who are not members of the GR crew, not on Patreon, totally cool. This will feel like a daily brew. And yeah. if you sort of dig the format and dig the casualness of it and dig the sit down and chat with friends about running, um, can, this is a great opportunity to sort of like see what we do every single day. Uh, even, I mean, even daily brew is more like, like laid back than this. Yeah. This is already pretty I'm laid back. Laid back. All right. Let me introduce our guest coming to us all the way from uh, about 12 <laughs> inches to my right, your left, the wonderful Kim Tashima Newberry. Yay! Yay! Hi. Hi. How are you? Doing well. How's the body? You know, the body is surprisingly like really good. <laughs> I, Why did you say it like well, that? Because I was like thinking I'm having a hard time not going for a run tonight. <laughs> yeah. You're already like Kim was ready to run hours. At, well, no, okay. I'm not going to say hours I after that. Run, but... Yes. Like I kind of was like, mm, I kind of want to go for a little shuffle, but I am trying to adhere to the training plan and be good at, you know, it's the recovery part of a race is yeah. obviously super important. So I'm just trying to um, follow the plan. I am, yeah. I do have the AOK -okay to go. Like for some get, hiking? I can go get some hiking mileages tonight. Good. Even if you good. had the no, you would have done it anyways. But yeah, so I, yeah. But yeah, body's feeling good. Good. So let's just quickly recap. Uh, you did a big event this weekend. Mm. Uh, for those who are just joining, it was it's called the Hamster 32 Hour. Yeah, so it is one of Wall of Trails, Gretchen Wall, who's in the chat room. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, Gretchen. Uh, it's one of Gretchen's races. It's a hamster endurance run uh, up in Bellingham around Lake Patton. So it's 2.6 mile loop. And there's a six hour, 12 hour, 24 and 32 hour. I did the, I signed up for the 32 hour. Yeah. So what's really cool about this format, we've talked about this format from time to time on the show is that you're given a time limit. So you basically are setting out on a six hour adventure, 12, 24, 32 hour adventure. And your goal is to just get as many loops as you can. Yeah. We've done a 12 hour in the past. Each of us had, has done what's called the car keek 12 hour. Mm -hmm. uh, you, have tw you get 12 hours, you have a two and a half mile loop and you do as many loops as you can. The goal is to just get as much as you can do. There's no um, uh, uh, cutoffs. So you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about someone like, you gotta get out of the aid station in yeah. the next five minutes or that's it. Um, the stress is really all kind of internal and it's not that bad. It's not like you're stressed about getting to a certain distance or anything like that. Yeah. And that's kind of part of the reason why I chose this particular race, this particular format is um, I have had some troubles in the past with cutoffs at race or just even the anxiety that builds inside of me right. because of the cutoffs, even if I am like well ahead of the cutoffs. Right. Um, so something like a timed race, uh, uh, is, is a good thing for me and for my brain to help settle. It takes that element out of the equation. It's, 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 you know, when you handle anxiety, it's like you look at things of like, okay, I need to control the controllables. So for me, taking away cutoff times is part of me taking control of something I can control to help me actually enjoy a race experience versus being hyper anxious and nervous and not enjoying things and constantly worrying about time, time, time. Yeah, <laughs> you're not glancing at your watch because you're worried you're going to have to quit or like be pulled from the race. Yeah. You're looking at your watch more like a, wow, I've got another 12 hours to do as much as I can. I have never th another 31 hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, I do want to mention that, again, this is a, a Wall of Trails event. It's a great organization put on by Gretchen Wall, who's in the chat. She's a crew member, and she's just a wonderful race director. She also helps us with Tiger Claw. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to shout out the organization. If you're looking to do any sort of loop-based race after the, tonight's conversation, many of you will. I guarantee it. Gretchen puts on some incredible events. So Hamster's not just the only one she does. She does uh, uh, like Twilight. There, there's all these different events yeah. that take place like in really beautiful places in Washington State. Yeah, she's got one coming up in the fall as Which well. I'm now thinking around, about like, doing. The Larches. Yeah, because well, you've inspired cool. me. Yeah. This was your first race since 2019? First race since, yeah. So first time pinning on a bib since Wham! in 2019 and i think that was in september yeah, like or august race, uh, yeah. september i think of 2019 so obviously 
uh, the pandemic happened and it took me a while to one actually feel like racing again yeah to being in a race environment like around people and like you're kind of like eating communal food and like you know all the things that the pandemic told us not to do it's you know it's kind of putting yourself in that position um and then also i think for me um even though my race experience my last one in 2019 was good i did not finish however i walked away from that race going dang that was actually really good yeah like mentally and physically yeah um it just still took me a while to decide when and how i wanted to race again right and and what race i actually wanted to uh put that energy into yeah we've had opportunities to race over the last couple of years obviously races are beginning to come back in the last year we've seen it we host yeah. our own races yeah. that are taking place and there's plenty of stuff locally but we've had these conversations many times and we get it get the question a lot from other people of like what's your next race what's your next race what's your big and, project and some people race all the time and that's totally cool too i think both of us we were in that mindset for many years whether it was like road running or trail whatever yeah. we did we raced a lot a lot a lot and then we just kind of didn't so it feels like i don't know for me i feel like i need to have like a true pull to something to actually sign up for something right so what made you sign up for this one in particular? Because you uh, signed up for this one a long time ago. You've had this one on the calendar now for a while. Yeah, I think I signed up. I want to say I signed up the day that registration opened. But I, now I'm like, I don't know if that's... I, I think, think I set an alarm, did. actually. No, you did. Because I think this one sells out or it, it's very popular amongst locals and people that travel. People that are from Colorado and stuff. Uh, because it's so approachable, it's very well hosted, and it's a beautiful location. I mean, yeah. you run around this gorgeous lake uh in the forest and stuff i think you did set an alarm yeah i think i did set an alarm because i was worried because i i had been thinking about racing again and trying to like figure out like what do i want what do i want out of this it's been right. so long how is it gonna feel um so yeah i did set an alarm signed up for it i wanted to sign up for it one i think at the time when i signed up i was thinking more of like who do i want to support in the community as far as like race directors go and it was a no-brainer for me for us we've to had be this like, conversation a lot gretchen yeah. is somebody who we just we love she's a good friend of ours she puts so much into the community and it is important to me to support other small businesses and other small race directors because during the pandemic throughout the pandemic it was a grind for everyone not mm -hmm. just race directors obviously it it the ripples were everywhere um but that was one of the important things for me is is knowing that like i'm signing up for something and i'm supporting someone who i believe in and who who is important to me um the other thing i think with hamster the reasoning was i kind of want to do something bigger mm. um and i wasn't sure that like signing up for cascade crest again or something like that i wasn't sure that that was actually what i wanted for myself mm -hmm. yet um and i also wanted to give myself the best chance of doing something fulfilling with uh the least amount of pressure totally and i say that in the because last year i was out for six ish months yep. with a labral tear in my hip yep. so that was the <laughs> that was the other thing is like I just needed to kind of be careful and just figure out, well, if I sign up, if I sign up for a hundred miler or a hundred K and my hip is not cooperating, I'm going to feel disappointed or I'm going to feel let down. Or right. I'm going to feel like, well, you know, like all this training and now my hips just going to be cranky again. Whereas if I sign up for something like a timed course, a loop based course, that's a smaller loop. Um, I can kind of go into it more open-minded and yep. more like I just need to give myself the best chance to do the best I can on that day, regardless of what the you know what happens with the hip. The hip could spring up and you could have issues again, which we didn't know because of you know you've done plenty of training, you have a great base going into this event, but there was a lot of unknowns of like what if that hip starts to act up again past forty miles? Like right. We don't know if it's going to uh, flare up at oh. any point beyond what you've trained. And so giving yourself yeah. the opportunity of like, if it flares up at 40 and I got to pull the plug because I don't want to make it worse, 
guess what? It's a success. It's not a, you did not finish the 100K distance because yeah. you didn't get to the finish line. And it was also in the training leading up too. So it was like, if the hip was right. going to become problematic, I had it in my mind of like, well, I can still, I can still go pin on the bib and do as much as I can comfortably. Even if that's, you know, two or three loops. Yeah. And it takes it took the pressure off of feeling like, well, you know, you've put all your eggs in this basket, regardless of how your hip is feeling, you're gonna need to just like push through the pain. And yeah. I just like I'm not I'm I'm forty one and I'm not willing to destroy myself. Mm -hmm. And I guess just like a little quick side story, um, Jess Mullen, who has the overall course record uh at Hamster, mm -hmm. uh Jess is also the super new badass incredible incredible person she's also the new uh race director for cascade crest she was out at hamster this weekend and i can't remember what distance she or what time she was doing either the six or the 12 but her and i ran into each other on one loop and she was asking me like what are your goals today and like you know we kind of got to talking and she's like oh can i ask like like not not like why you're not going for the 100 miler but why is it 100k the goal today and i started talking about like the hip problem i'm like you know i'm like 41 and i need to look at this from a smarter perspective of you know we we've talked we want to do this for as long as possible mm -hmm. and as healthy as possible okay. and she was even saying she she was saying to me that she completely understood that and she she's had these thoughts lately too of like do I even want to run another hundred miler? Like, right. do, am I willing to like throw my body at the wall right. for th this one, uh, one you know moment in time? Yeah. <laughs> Versus, can can I just you know plug along and do these other things that are going to make me happy and and continue to do them healthy and happy for a longer period of time? So I think the approach of this was more of an experiment. Yeah. This was uh, a test of what your body was capable of doing, what your mind was capable of doing without the, um, I guess, walls built around a race where it's point A to point B and there's eight stations along the way and there's other elements that could pop up that could sort of take the day away from you. This race, and I told this to Gretchen, and I've, I've just thought a lot about these loop-based races, and I think people tend to approach uh, uh, to view them, and this is a generalization. We talked about this on Daily Group, yeah. but this is a generalization. I think people tend to look at these loop-based races as, oh, I will never do that because that's just too boring. I, I think running the same two and a half mile loop is just going to get tedious. I don't want to do that. That's not my jam. I want to, you know, point A to point B or a giant loop, like totally valid reasons, right? But I do hope people give these loop-based races a chance because they are designed or the design of them like is there for you to succeed every runner succeeds no matter what they do on that day which is which is a different angle than a race that is point a to point b you got to get to the finish line to be considered a finisher right like, yeah not necessarily that a dnf is a not success but to finish is a success in this case you could literally just start yeah you could maybe do a loop and then that's it. And then it's like, doesn't matter. For 30 hours and you then, absolutely like, do could. Loop. <laughs> not that anyone would. Not that anyone would sign up for a 32 hour event, do one loop, and then sleep. Uh, I joked other that than I was a joke. Like, do something like <laughs> Yeah. Like, other than doing it for the joke. But the, the, it is a possibility and you don't fail. Yeah. And I think doing the timed event is you're racing for yourself, with yourself, and against yourself. And that's it. And yeah, there is the element of competition. You can compete against other people. You're trying to get, if you want to, you can get caught up in the, oh man, that person's doing two more loops than me. I'm going to take advantage of the night section. You, and I mean, you can, but to be honest with you, like everything gets pretty fuzzy pretty quickly of like where people are. Okay. Because you could think that you're running with the same group of people like the whole time because yeah. you kind of keep seeing them, but then you take, you know, like five minutes longer at an aid station but maybe they go into the bathroom or they are talking to their family or whatever it's things get pretty uh well for me anyways i can't speak for the people who are at the front of the pack or anything but for me i was just like i don't know what anyone else is doing and they don't know what i'm doing which is kind of cool know is that we're all just still out here just doing our thing even though you're only two and a half miles apart from each other there really is this it after the first couple of hours things just kind of get lost it gets foggy you yeah. don't know what other people are doing yeah i have tons of questions 
Uh, we have tons of questions from the Discord server. If you are watching this live and you have questions for Kim about the 32-hour hamster event that she completed this weekend, please drop them into the chat. I'll do my best to see them. And yeah. I know you're kind of keeping an eye on it, too. There was an earlier one from uh, Nathaniel that I do want to get to. I got that one pulled You do have it here. pulled? Yep. Great. We can get to that in a minute. I just want to ask you simply, Uh huh. did it get boring? Does a two-and-a-half-mile loop get boring? Truthfully. Uh, honestly, for me, it did not. And I don't know if everybody feels the same way. I felt the same way uh, at Karkik. And I think yeah. you did too. 100%. It's a um, two and a half mile loop there as well. So I kind of had that expectation in my mind that it wouldn't get boring for me. Um, we went into Karkik not really knowing what a loop-based race felt like. We right. had True. we had awesome people to look up to. Um, Andy Pearson mm. is one a good friend of ours mm. and he has a lot of experience especially around that time doing stuff like big backyard yeah um and he gave us a lot of good advice and i remember during car key he was actually writing uh i think haikus for us every loop that we did or something like oh, that God, i forgot <laughs> about that yeah shout out andy thank you um years ago Appreciate so you. that kind of you know i think he, he kind of helped us like set up set ourselves up for success mm. and no know, knowing that like oh they're they're there are strategies, but like, you know, just be consistent. And yeah, like his have big thing was consistency. And yeah. Um, so I didn't get bored at Karki. So I went into this thinking, feeling the same way, even though this was going to be a much longer situation. Uh, I personally didn't didn't get bored. That's good to know. Um, and Scotty McKinnon in the chat who ran the 12 hours says a lot of time I was running by myself and I was too. Um, I will say I went into this one thinking like, oh, man, it's going to feel busy until the 12 hour runners are gone. Mm. Uh, but it didn't. There was a lot of time. I spent a lot of time by myself or like you yeah, kind of see a said. runner way ahead. It did feel I told you this, especially after the 12 hour runners were finished. It almost felt like just everybody would just kind of move like. <laughs> Everybody's just moving into like from each other and just rotating pace. around the lake. Um, so you weren't really running into people or, you know, I, I had a few conversations here and there uh, with folks. But as far as boredom, I didn't get bored. I didn't get bored. Let's ask uh, Nathaniel's question. You have it pulled aside. I'm going to try to find it in the chat so I can actually click it. You're almost there. Am I almost there? All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, let's actually see if it works. It, it not. does not. Okay, great. Anyways, Nathaniel asks, Kim. In acclaimed Newberry blockbuster, Altering Expectations, a movie that I made, it's on the channel, you dealt with a myriad of issues that impacted your performance. How did this performance differ, and what did you do differently? So it's always interesting to look back to Altering Expectations. That was my very first Ultra. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first 50K. I think at that time, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself uh, because I was feeling like, imposter syndrome times a thousand right. i felt like i needed to like like i wanted to run an ultra but i also felt like i needed to run an ultra mm -hmm. um so i put a, a lot of ex exterior uh pressure on myself and that was it was just um debilitating anxiety and that caused all the dry heaving and the feeling sick and i feel like since that race, I've learned a lot and learned more to like accept myself as a runner that I am and be like content and happy with that. Right. Um, I did worry that anxiety might creep in in this race. Uh, but when I started, I just tried to like relax and not put pressure on myself. Yeah. And I was shocked that I didn't have anxiety. So I think that was like the big difference from like maybe the runner that I was uh, during uh, altering expectations versus the person or the human I am now Yeah, is that I feel like I'm more in tune with like doing this for myself because it makes me happy yeah. versus feeling like I have to do this or I need to do it even if nobody's telling me I need to do it. Um, so I think honestly, keeping my anxiety under control for the most part really just helped me have a different outcome in this. I also think, you know, from from altering expectations time, I'm just uh, I have more experience under my belt. I have more mountain running under my belt. Yeah. I just I think experience goes 
a long way. Mm -hmm. And I also think like personal growth and knowing yourself and trying to have confidence in yourself also goes a long way. When you're dealing with your first, uh, I would say first ultra or first attempt at any particular distance. So that could be first 50K, it could be first half marathon, could be first 100K, 100 miler. There's always this mindset of, did I do enough? Or did I do it right? Or there's, a, there's so much worry that goes into the actual performance on race day. Like I remember from altering expectations where the Oregon Coast 50K, you were worried that you didn't have enough training, that you didn't know what to do nutrition. Like there's all these things that, as an outsider, I'm like, you're doing everything right. Everything's good. And you know, in your back of the brain, everything's good. Yeah. But there's all that doubt of what are things going to align today? Am I going to be able to get this distance I've never done before? And it, feeling like so much unknown. You know, like at Oregon Coast, I just started feeling like the anxiety early on. And in my, and it instantly right. like made me feel defeated. Right. Right it's off a snowball the bat. immediately. And that's something you and I have talked about because as a person who runs like mid to back of the pack, it is. It is hard to start a race and literally see the entire field run away from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you kind of look back and you're like, okay, well, it's me you know, and it's that guy and, and like, that person. Like, that's I it. I guess my husband's back there taking pictures of me. But you're like, doing great. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where I was going, but yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in that and feel like from, you're from doing the, it wrong right, right away. Right from the start. Um, or feel like, yeah, like things are going to be bad right away. Yeah. So it's, you know, and looking over the course of your career since then in ultra and trail running, you've attempted so many difficult things, 50 milers multiple times, and you've completed them. Uh, 100K, 100 miler, like you have all these attempts at difficult things where there is that element of an unknown. With this race this weekend, you again we're able to sort of pull the components out of it that you didn't want to deal with yeah so feeling like you're in last place that's not even a part of the equation anymore um the time limit is 32 hours there's no distance limit or anything like that so you, yeah. you took all these things that have worried you in the past and just threw them out yeah aid stations with weird food don't worry about it you've got your food constantly every loop if you need it um the things that you didn't know or haven't experienced yet include and add some or correct me if I'm wrong, but running through the night. So you haven't done that other than like in training where you've run at night with a headlamp, but you've yeah. never gone through the night. Just uh, pacing and yeah, training. Just, just yeah. pacing. Right. Uh, other people, but not like run all day, right. Go into the night and then run to the sunrise. Yeah. You've never run past 50 miles. You've never really had to deal with anything longer time wise than 12 to 14 hours probably out like there on certain courses 13 hours yeah so anything past that time anything past that distance 50 miles and anything past uh like the following morning sunrise you've never seen dealt with touched only like cruder or, or paced people to those right. moments did those moments give you that same nervous energy that the other elements have given you in the past or were they just like i'm not even going to worry about them because what's the point um yeah i think i was more excited to check those things off my list um you know like running through the night and running beyond 50 miles i will say i did start to think about how long it's been since i've run 50 miles and it's been yeah. since 2018 right it's been a while so it's been a number of years since i've run a 50 miler um and that did start to give me like, oh, man, can I even do that? Like, it's been a long time. It happens every time. And then you start to reflect on your training. It's like, oh, my training is very different than it was before that 50 miler. Um, but I think I was more excited to be like, let's see if we can do that. Let's see if that's going to happen. And how is that going to feel? I think the we've talked about it before, the stay curious, be curious, mm -hmm. like dig into the curiosity of things versus yeah. like the like worry um i think that helped me kind of control those types of feelings sure yeah uh maybe let's get to some of the live questions you have the questions pulled up there uh unless you've seen oh from the discord the discord perhaps 
Um, this one is just like a simple, just course question that was asked by, uh, Andrea. Andrea asked, did the loop switch directions at times, or did you have to go the same way every time? I imagine that changing direction can feel like a nice change in scenery and breaks up the monotony. Uh, for hamster, you run the exact same way, the exact same loop for the entire time. Yep. Makes it easy to track. Makes it easy to not lose runners. Yeah. Yeah um question from do you want me to just go through a few questions yes yeah. you're asking yourself questions i feel mm -hmm. bad i would i would read them but <laughs> they're on my computer i'm enjoying watching you read uh, them answer. Qu question from <laughs> michael on discord michael asked did you listen to anything during your solo miles if not any mantras on the hamster wheel so i did make <laughs> i did make myself a playlist um for hamster it was very weird <laughs> I remember you picking songs like the night before. Like, why did you put that <laughs> song on there? And I think maybe they were just some songs were added to just give your brain a like a what? Why? Yeah, I have a very my playlist is very, very weird. Um, and it was about two hours. It was about two hours worth of music. So not very long. Uh, and I did end up listening. So I did. I started with music right off the start. I listened to music for the first three hours. My my earbuds died so i charged them for a loop and then uh uh listened to music again after that I, was, I found like listening to music felt good i generally don't listen to music yeah. during i mean training runs i don't really do it unless you know it's uh, i just don't you really rarely do it even on, on the trails runs, yeah um and then during races i generally don't i usually will stick headphones in just in case i want that um I just felt like it was a good way to kind of just like get going. Uh, the very first song that played was uh, Nirvana Lithium. And I put that on my playlist because uh, we're obviously big Kraken fans. I, I mean, I love Nirvana as well, but when Seattle Kraken score, that's their score, their goal song. Their goal music. And so it was kind of cool. I just put it on shuffle and that was the first song that came on while I was standing at the start line waiting to go. And that kind of like sent me off with like this. This is amazing. Like, <laughs> I just <laughs> like, scored a so goal. Um, but yeah, my playlist is my playlist was pretty weird. It had I do remember rolling into the aid station. I was like, hey, Austin, uh, who was there volunteering and crewing. I was like, uh, look what song's playing. And it was a 10 minute version of Taylor Swift's All Too Well. <laughs> Which were you playing that again today? Yeah, I think it probably, uh -huh. yeah. um and I, I was saying I was like I just I put it on there because I felt like it's a 10 minute song. It's slow and it's calm. Um and I felt like if I got felt like I was going too fast, it would help. That was my reminder to like take it back a notch. You're fine. Just yeah. like chill out and just shuffle along for a little bit. Um but yeah, I had I had everything from like 90s rap and R&B to uh I think I had some Oasis on there. Um lots more crack and goal songs. Uh, uh Definitely 9 Inch Nails yeah. was there like you playing after Biggie and Taylor Swift and <laughs> quite the eclectic mix. Yeah, it was an interesting mix. And as far as um mantras, I uh something that I've been Telling myself since it was the second time that I ran Lake Sonoma is one of the things I like to just tell myself over and over again is you belong, which sounds simple and <clears throat> maybe not like running specific, but when towing the line of a race in general with ultras, you get to tow the line with the elite, mm -hmm. the best of the best, mm -hmm. the fast people. Um, and it's easy to get in your own mind of like, why am like, I don't deserve to be here or like I didn't train as hard as these people or I don't run as fast as these people like um so I, at races prior to that I would find myself questioning and doubting myself and so saying like I belong I belong I belong <laughs> um that usually helps me settle into reminding myself like yeah I do belong and I do deserve to be here just mm -hmm. as much as everyone else so that mm -hmm. was kind of my part of my thing you went into this with some goals. So let's start talking about the goals and then how that day kind of played out. But what, what were your goals? You're given 32 hours. A lot can happen in 32 hours. How did you approach it? Yeah. So the initial goal when I signed up for this was to give myself the best chance at getting a hundred mile finish. Throughout the training year, 
things changed a little bit with my hip and my training. And so my training ended up getting pulled way back. And we can talk about that a little bit too. Like my training wasn't this ideal. This is starting in January, February. It was early. Yeah, yeah, it was just early. And it was it at that point, I was like, all right, I just kind of need to change my my outlook and my goals on things. Yeah. Um. So my goals going into it um, for the last several months has been to try to check off the 100K mark because I haven't done that yet. So that was a goal. That was my like big, big goal yeah. was to get to 100K. And you gave yourself the best chance to do it. I mean, you, st- you stayed at the 32-hour distance because that's what you signed up for originally, and there was no point to drop down. Like, let's see if you can get 100K in that. Knowing, we talked about this too, that you could pace yourself and take a long sleep if you needed to. You could go to a yes. restaurant and, well, I guess you couldn't really leave, but go sit down and I have a meal a restaurant to me yeah you could sit down you could have a meal you could have chipotle yeah. and then take a nap and then come back out and then go more chipotle. <laughs> so how did your day start like how did you pace yourself how did you <clears throat> choose how to do this so so this is kind of interesting um i do just want to quickly pull gretchen's question since she is she's the boss she's, in, the she's the boss of this thing is it not far i'll find it um uh so as far as pacing and and stuff i went into this knowing that in order to like survive many hours i would just have to pull back get comfortable probably walk the hills um i think gretchen put it in the way that this this is a very runnable race that is not flat so it's easy to like get caught up into it. So I think in one of the pre-race emails, Gretchen had alluded to that, like run your own race, hike your own race, walk your own race. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get carried away. So the very first loop, I got behind a couple of women who I know are very seasoned in this type of race and in this particular race. I know they've run it several times. And I was kind of chatting with them and and running just a little bit behind them. And I... So, like I wanted to use the first loop and be a sponge and kind of learn yeah. as much as I could. Yeah. <laughs> like even if it was just from like afar, just to just to see and see how these particular women were handling the loop. Because like I think everybody went out pretty conservative. I was I had wondered before if like some people were just gonna go out fast just to kind of like try and bank, bank some miles. miles. Yeah. Um so yes, yeah, so I got behind these women and everybody's like going really easy pace and this like tiny little rise in the trail happened. Like I'm talking very like a little bump up to like a, ro- a Couple boat feet. launch. Yeah. It was like, and they both stopped and walked and I was like, okay, this is how it's done. Like mm-hmm. this is how this works and this is how like you can be successful over that many hours. So I I did the exact same thing they did, they did when I got to it. I stopped and I walked and then started running again. And there was another little bump up over like kind of like a root of a tree, you turn a corner, it's about one mile in and they both stopped and walked. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to follow these women. Just like, <laughs> like hey. you're unlocking the secrets yeah, of I'm this like, race. Well, because, yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> You don't, I think, I, I have never run at Lake Padden before, so I didn't quite know what to expect. Um, and I've obviously done a loop-based race before, but yeah. I haven't done one of this many hours, this big of duration. And knowing that these people were like, these pros were right here in front of me, I was like, I'm going to take advantage of this and just 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 sit back and learn. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of cool. So pacing-wise, that's exactly what I did. And that's what a lot of people were doing. Run, like I say running, but like easy running the flats, running the downhills and hiking, hiking the hills. Like hills, like every little, every every incline. incline, Every incline. Yeah. So that, that is where my pacing went. Um, And as far as like the first few loops and stuff, I just felt like I was steady i felt really good you're making great Um, time i do think i said to like austin one of my loops is like i need to slow down otherwise i might get into trouble because it it did feel like i think for me not having the anxiety (laughs) was like a what is the superpower that i'm having and like why do i feel so good right now um so yeah so that was kind of how the first part of the day went it's a flat 
relatively flat loop. I think there's a couple hundred feet of vert, maybe just under 200 feet, but it's one of those where it can lure you into a false sense of speed and comfort because it's everything's runnable. I train on mountains. This is nothing. The problem is that after 10 hours of that, it can destroy your body because of all the running. We see it all the time in flat 100 milers where people are yeah. like, oh, hobbling is a perfect example. Fairly flat for 100. Yeah. A um, couple thousand feet of vert total. But people get into trouble. Heat and runnable terrain makes for a, a tough combo. But you paced yourself really, really well following along. And you you managed to kind of tick off loops in, in like a really consistent manner. How did nutrition and, and happen? How was nutrition working and when did things go south? Because things <laughs> went south. Yes, things definitely went south. Um, so I was staying relatively good on my nutrition for the first several hours. I did run into some stomach issues fairly early on. I can't remember what hour it was, but it wasn't that many hours into the day. And I was like, oh, no, like. This is not great. Not a great setup. Um, but yeah. I was able to right that ship for a little while um, until like a few hours later, uh, which was still, in the grand scheme of things, of it being a 32-hour event, it was still very early Pretty for it early. to be happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had to try and like figure out my nutrition issues at that point and why things weren't working for me. So I adjusted things a little bit. I, you know, looking back, I think... Yeah, like I was texting you a little bit during the race and I think I was running at a lower, my engine was running at like a lower, um, like I was revving lower than Thank I you. normally yeah, would, nice job. but I was fueling as if I was during like a Lake Sonoma race or something, Right, running hard, running hot, running as fast as I could to get to, you know, cut off, cut off. Right. So I think I was either overfueling or um, some of the fuel, some of the nutrition I was using was liquid nutrition. And I think it was just like bottle after bottle after bottle was just yeah. like too much for my gut to handle. Yeah. So, so it slowed you down. Uh, was there a point where you doubted <clears throat> you would reach your goals? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's hard because... It's, you know, I, I felt my race <laughs> like unraveling and everything coming apart at one point. And I think it was before I was even at the 50 mile mark. And I did feel like, oh man, this is going to, my, my stomach is so bad right now. I can't keep any food in. Um, I, I know I have time to reset, but there's still that voice in the back of your head going like, this is it. Like, this is it. Yeah. This is how your day ends. Um, and it's a problem that you've had at other races in the past, including your most your <clears throat> race previous to this in 2019 at Wham, and yeah, it's been <clears throat> a cause to derail some of your events in the past. Yeah, because like you were dealing with cutoffs, and when the stomach goes bad, sometimes you have to sit and wait to get food in. Yeah, and that can cause <clears throat> issues. Yeah, so the stomach, like to to be like completely honest like my stomach was just it was so bad it was cramping so bad it was painful i like food wasn't working uh i tried to like not really do my nutrition and just like sip water and coke or sip water and ginger ale to try and like settle things down and that wasn't working so i definitely did get a little discouraged for a little bit of time because i felt like you know, my earlier hours, I was like, this is actually really good. Mm -hmm. Almost hit my 50K PR, almost hit my 50 mile PR. But then it seemed like, I think it was those miles between like 50 and 62, like the 100K mark, where I felt like they were dragging on. I wasn't taking in calories. I knew I needed to, I knew I wanted to, but yeah. I just couldn't make it happen. And I started thinking like, I know I have all these hours, but is it still possible? Guess it's not still out. <laughs> um, you did have a huge pick me up arrive probably around the 7 38 p.m. hour, and that was your pacer, Angela Kuja, <clears throat> who happens to be in the chat. Uh, yeah. Angela is a seasoned ultra runner herself. Uh, what was it like to have a little bit of a okay, I have a pacer now, I have 
someone else to kind of look out for me and I can kind of relinquish control a little bit. Did that assist at all or was it more of a hindrance? Was Angela a terrible She was horrible. Sidekick. No. <laughs> um so before I started the race, you and I had talked about like things to look forward to. And I think we that's something that I try and frame out a race um regardless of what it is it's like well what if if things are going sideways at some point what are the things you can keep in your mind that you can still look forward to even yep. if things are going horrible 100 percent um and it can be like seeing your loved ones at an aid station or having your favorite snack at whatever time you know and so An like angela arriving was one of those things that i was like i'm just gonna look forward to that you know look forward to seeing angela um and then after that, I was like, oh, I'm going to look forward to seeing you and Gus arrive. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely was looking forward to Angela getting there because it was also right around sunset time as well. And I was like, oh, I think it would be nice to have have a buddy. Just, yeah, here. have a buddy, right? <laughs> Just have a familiar person you can talk to or be talked at yeah. by. Yeah. What was it like running past 50 miles? So at that point, you had never run past 50 miles. What was that feeling like? So that was also one of those moments that I had set up in my mind of like, get excited about this. Like after 50 miles, you're going to celebrate. It's going to feel so good. I was in a bit of a pit of despair <laughs> at that point. And I was, I, I was, it's weird. Like when you get into those hours and that time and those miles, you start to get hyper-focused on things yeah. and you keep telling your brain like, um, you know, all these things, even if it's not quite right, or you start doing the math. So instead of being like really excited that I had like crested over the 50 mile mark, which is the longest I had ever run before, I started worrying about like that 100K mark. You weren't going to get there. I was feeling like it feels like it's so far off. My loops right now are taking forever. My stomach is so painful. And like once the sun set, I put my waist headlight, my, my waist light on. My stomach was so sore that I couldn't have that on my waist. Like that's how mm. sore my stomach was. Damn. So I started feeling like instead of being excited about like, oh my god, every step is a distance PR. This is amazing. And, and let's be honest, like it's only us ultra runners who look at fifty miles as not necessarily being like this massive massive goal mm -hmm. right because we're so used to like oh well, like everybody's running 100 miles a 50 miler is just like whatever um but i start yeah i i i do have a little bit of regret of not being super excited about that and instead my brain just being like mm, you might not get to 100k <laughs> <laughs> even though you're at like 52 54 and had so you know so many hours so many hours lots left. of hours yeah. you reached 50 at what like 8 p.m 9 p.m yeah i can't remember it was somewhere around that time after frame. sunset yeah. but like just and so angela was with you yeah so at that point going into the night you i mean ever your stomach had not righted itself you tried everything your wonderful crew austin and darren uh and angela weren't able to get you to get any food in that felt good so there wasn't anything like oh this is the key you know like coke didn't work well you would take coke but it wasn't like the the magical elixir that one would hope in right. an ultra so like nothing was staying in <clears throat> nothing was working it was awful yeah. so did you set a goal as the sun set like you passed 50 miles where you're like i just want to get to the 100k and then that's it or yeah mindset? so that that was the goal the goal was like even though i feel like i need to stop for a little while to see if i can write the ship i don't want to stop until i get to 100k the last thing i wanted to do was stop and to be like all right you're at 54 miles yeah you're gonna stop for a few hours and then you have to do you know a few more loops to get Can't your restart i just was like i am not interested in that i am not stopping until i get to 100k i'm not doing that is me being like the control person again mm -hmm. of like <laughs> i'm controlling my controllables in order to achieve my goal i just need to stop it out and stay out here until at least 100k yeah. so that that was the goal is like get to 100k if things are still bad then try and reset and you did it I did it. Yeah, I did it. You got to 100K. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure it didn't feel like the stomach didn't help, but you managed to get there in the early hours of the morning. And did you nap 
Was that when you were like, okay, yeah. like what was the strategy at that point? Because you had plenty of time left. You had lots I had of time. Plenty of time left, and I wasn't like, you know, even though 100k was the goal, I wasn't. I didn't have it in my mind of like, oh, just get to 100k and you can go home. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't really the situation. It was more like, well, get to 100k and then just like see how things go. See if you can like rally, fix the situation. See if you can give yourself the opportunity to like maybe go out. And it was that like kind of driving it in my brain, even when I felt horrible. It's like, stay curious. <laughs> Like, yeah, even see, though I was maybe. like super frustrated, it was like, just stay curious. Like you, you don't, that's the thing with the loop based race It's you and yourself. It's you seeing what you can do. Yeah. Right. So it was just kind of like, stay curious, stay curious, stay curious. Um, so that, that was the situation. So it was, the plan was hundred K and then maybe just see if I can nap a little bit, try and like let my st stomach sit. See if like, you know, kind of sitting down for a while will help and then reassess. Yeah. The next morning, I remember you, you took a break mm. for a couple of hours through the night, through the early morning like hours, hours, basically. Hours yeah, like something. six hours. Just sort of took, took a break to reset the stomach, mm. hoping by the morning you'd be able to put in some calories yeah. and they'd stay in and you'd be able to like rally and get some loops in. But I remember seeing you in the morning and you kind of gave me the recap of the night and you had this break and we got out of the car and we were kind of walking back towards your chair so you could sit in the chair and like kind of figure things yeah. out but i remember you also walking by the start line and, and jess mullen was there she was tagging people off yeah. for their loops and stuff and she's like you gonna go out for another loop and you said maybe and i went a oh, maybe is better than a no because i was uh. anticipating because you felt I've never seen you feel that bad. You had pushed beyond the bad that you felt at other races that have really ruined the races. Like this was yeah. so far beyond. And also like to be like 100% transparent, I did. So you were planning on showing up early, early in the morning. And during my like break, my rest, I was sitting outside and I had been like shivering, like hard shivering in a chair for hours. Yeah like in the dewy cold night and Austin was there with me also freezing cold. And I did text you like, I just want to go like, I, yeah, I, like, I want to come. Home. I want to come home. <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, it's like you get into those moments. So the, I would want to ask Tesmenta's question from discord from mm -hmm. earlier. Tesmenta asked, once you had achieved your goal, what motivated you to keep moving forward to do more laps? And was it harder or easier after that point? So to your point, several hours had passed. You and Gus arrived. Um, I had the chance to get in a car and get warm. Everything still felt horrible. I still couldn't eat. I still couldn't keep anything in. Um, but we did make our way back down. Um, the parking lot's like 20 yeah, feet from, very, the, from the very, aid station. Yeah. And I think... You know, as far as like Tesman's question is like, after you achieved your goal, what motivated you to keep moving? I was super happy with the fact that I got 100K. Yeah. But I also kind of felt like, well, I'm still here. Yeah. And also, um, I've had a couple races where I've had pacers or crew travel for me. And I ended up getting cut or dropping for whatever reason and not using utilizing those people and i still feel guilty and i still feel horrible about mm. that even though those people like you know they're happy to have been there happy for the to have been yeah. there you know you when if you've been in the sport long enough you definitely have crewed or paced somebody who has dropped or dnf'd and you're still happy to be there yeah but i didn't want to feel that again and i think for me i was just like i'm here like it sucks um but also my feet and my legs felt great you were physically incredible like you're you were walking around like no big deal most people when they get to mile 60 of a ultra getting into a chair is like uh, you know getting out of it is like a, uh, you were just like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> your stomach was freaking done my stomach was horrible and that that but you were like, like the... leaping and jumping <laughs> and doing push-ups oh lots of push-ups yeah. lots of push-ups um my stomach was so bad and so painful and so wrecked 
that's why I couldn't run. But I was kind of thinking like, all right, I think I can probably, you know, the sun is up. It's beautiful out. Angela is here still. Like she didn't leave and go home in the middle of the night. Well, while she could have. Yeah. She could have. She probably wanted to. Um, and like you and Gus were there as well. And I was just like, oh, you know, I kind of want to, I kind of want to just like go walk. Maybe I can go walk one more loop. Yeah. You didn't walk one more loop. You walked a bunch more loops. You did manage to get more loops under your belt. Uh, I just, I remember that moment when Jess asked you like, you gonna go get more? And I was expecting you to say like, nah, I think that's it. Like I thought you were walking to sort of yeah. call it, but you were like, maybe. And I went, oh shit, like she's not done. Sure enough, you were not done. You went back out, Angela was there with you mm -hmm. and you guys uh, went out, walked a bunch more loops. You ended up getting close to 72 miles or something in your roundabouts. Uh, you crushed it the next morning, like managed to rally. I mean, nothing got better. It wasn't like all of a sudden the stomach is great and now we're- In fact, the stomach got worse. It got worse. I mean, it got <laughs> worse. Didn't think it could, it did. Uh, but you, every time you'd finish a loop, you'd come in, you'd be like, that was the worst loop. And then you'd take a couple, you'd like lay down in the grass. You'd just like, what am I even doing? And then you'd get up and somehow you and Angela just kind of left and you'd do another one. I will say <clears throat> I got to the point where I was at 68 point something, I think. And my stomach was hurting so badly and I felt so horrible. But I think I said to you like, oh, but I'm so close, like I'm so close to 70 yeah, miles. I wanna get and that so round number. We had the conversation and you, you had said to me like, <clears throat> cause I was like, I don't, that one was like the worst. Cause I started getting like really nauseous and just like, I was like, I just, uh, I just don't know if I can go again. And you're like, well, tomorrow morning after you've had some sleep, you know, are you going to wish that you got to the 70 mile mark? Like you're so close. And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this race gives everyone an opportunity. <laughs> and it's what, what it we is. do with the opportunity that, that yeah. reflects on our character. And it is, it is totally justifiable for you to have called it at a hundred K at 50 miles, like all the justification in the world. But you beyond 50 miles, you went to 100 K because that was your that was your goal going into this was to get to that 100 K. Yeah. You're going to do it no matter what you got there and you easily could have justified going home. Everything was wrong. Everything was broken except for your spirit. <laughs> and the next morning you're like, well, I'm going to keep going. And you're like, I just want to get to 70 miles like that. Good, clean, like 70 miles yeah. feels good. And you got there and beyond. Um, it is a testament to who you are as as an athlete and also what a great opportunity and what a great way for you to provide yourself the opportunity to prove to yourself how much stronger you think you are. Because I think you, for as long as I've known you, well, let's, let's, not as long as I've known you, but since you've been in ultra and you've done more and more ultra races and stuff, there's always this doubt that you have. And I think a lot of ultra runners have this, I, myself included, that you mentioned it before, that we don't belong or that we're not uh, that we're not enough. Like mm -hmm. we can't get to the hundred K distance because I'm just not cut out for that. My training wasn't good. It yeah, wasn't right. Wasn't it wasn't My hip enough. Wasn't hurt. This, yeah. that, this. So we can, then it's not that they're excuses. They're justifiable reasons for people to not have these as goals, but you laid out all the things that you could to give yourself the best chance of success. And you not only reached your goal, you surpassed it. So you got to 70, I think it was 71 and a half or 71 something, 71 and change. I did walk around the parking lot. To get to an equal. And you're like, just keep walking and I'll keep, pick you up when you get yeah, to it. Just for the watch's sake, right? Um, you did it. You like went be yeah. above and beyond and you had mm. hours to spare. But I you did. at that point, you're like, you, you know, it's it's one thing to add another six miles. and But right now, like, the focus was I can't keep food in and I can't stay up. Like, there's so many reasons. And it's, yeah. you know, totally justifiable. Yeah. But you used 29 of the 32 hours, I think. Yeah, I think like 28 or 29. Yep. You got an incredible amount of miles. And when you were done with that loop past 70, which at that point kind of become your new goal, let's just get to 70. Mm -hmm. Longest you've ever run by 20 miles. Yeah. Longest you've ever run time wise by hours, double, hours hours. double pretty much. Uh, you're laying on the grass. We're packing up the stuff. You are like destroyed. You're like, I, I'm like, well, I my, need my, you to pack. My 
<laughs> stomach area was destroyed. Oh, just like everything so, else yeah. was like, yeah. But you're laying there, and the race director Gretchen, we'd said our goodbyes. We were yeah. packing up and ready to go because it was also almost the end of the race. And Gretchen like kind of hurriedly comes over. I thought I was getting in trouble for some. I didn't know what's going on. I was like, it looks official coming over here, and she's coming over, and it looks like a mission. Did I do something? Yeah, it legitimately. Did I say something? Gretchen while came I was over sleepy? with just this like. It legitimately looked like she was going to take back some loops. <laughs> You're gonna need to leave, Kim. I need you to reverse some loops because we need to take some miles off. What happened? Gretchen walked over, and she said, "I I don't actually remember a hundred percent because I was very much like." It was it was very simple, but it kind of caught all of us off guard because we thought it was going to be one thing, but it was another. Yeah, she was like, "Like you podiumed, you got third place female," and I think I was like, "Ha ha ha, 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 ha. Like, hilarious. hilarious, hilarious joke." And she handed me this. It's not going to focus. It won't focus. We've tried this in the past, but it does say third place female at the bottom there. This is the uh, Hamster Endurance Runs third place female 32 hour finisher. Kim, third place. Well freaking done. I just break Smash. it. Congratulations. Um, Podium. So that was kind of a crazy, that was a crazy uh, cherry on top of the Sunday, I guess. Um, that was pretty neat. That was pretty neat. It was very neat. I still said to you, I think they made a mistake. <laughs> Um, but it, it was it was very very special. Um, the the whole day was very special. The people out there were very special. The volunteers were incredible. Uh, on one of my last loops out, I did see Jess Mullen out. She was just running some just doing loops, her own thing, and like she was like, "You're still out here. Like I'm so proud of you." And to have somebody that you admire say that to you while you're out, just like barely like trekking along, is pretty incredible. Yeah. It's, it's a very it's it is a good feeling to feel like hear that and yeah it was pretty neat pretty special would you do it again yes and i'm already worried that i'm gonna have to set like an extra early alarm <laughs> to register yeah to do it again um yeah i definitely would do it again we you and i i started talking immediately about like going back next year and like i know that you want to do it as well um i I, I truly can't say it enough. I know Gretchen is a friend of ours, but even if Gretchen wasn't a friend of ours, I would still uh, like scream it from the mountaintops. Like Gretchen puts on a really, really special event that allows you to see what you can do. Yeah. Like it's all you like just, just trekking around the lake hours and hours Baby raccoons, bats, a little bit of everything. A little bit. You saw more wildlife on. Reaching out. Yeah, you said you saw more wildlife on the hamster loop than you saw in the entirety of pacing Angela at Cascade Crest 100. Yes. Yeah. More on this loop. Funny. But it's I I I can't um, say enough good things about it. Gretchen puts on a wonderful event, and I'm grateful and I'm I'm so happy that I chose that for my race back and we definitely have already been looking at Gretchen's other races a hundred percent it is a it, again a huge shout out to you Kim because you proved a lot to yourself and to others this weekend I think you know by others I mean you proved to other people that they can do things that are difficult and they can set their own challenges and their own goals and we can control these controllables and there are events like hamster that are set up for success for runners and it, it's i don't know i got jazz after that after seeing you finish and have a rough night but still rally in the morning like i got so excited i'm like this i miss this about loop based races like i really want to try it again so uh if you are thinking about doing any sort of event like this we highly encourage you to check them out if you do not live in washington state there are events like this across the globe really yeah um all sorts of different formats and fun games within that like the backyard style and and beyond uh but a huge shout out to gretchen and walla trails is the name of her organization that she does volunteers uh, were incredible too huge shout out to volunteers and of course a shout out to your crew uh darren and austin who were both your crew at times and also eight station volunteers at times they were fantastic Angela Couser, who drove all the way up as well to pace you. Fantastic. We really appreciate all the support from those three. 
and uh, all the rest of the crew who were there who also set their own goals and did amazing things. I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you have that pulled aside. We'll, we'll say that yeah. for a second. Uh, we're going to wrap up the main show here. Kim has, I mean, there's still, God, 10 questions from Discord Plus. Um, yeah. So we were, we're going to move right into the after show and we'll ask all those questions of Kim. Maybe I'll take your laptop and read them to you. <laughs> uh, but there's still tons to talk about. Uh, any last thoughts about your weekend? Anything that you take from it, glean from the experience that you'd like to share? I mean, I think for me, it was a good reminder of what I can do and what I can do with like a happy mind. <laughs> and that like for, for me, that that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. It's huge to come out of this feeling accomplished and feeling like, you know, all the work that you put in that I've put in over the year, um, it paid off and I feel really good and really proud and really, um, happy. And I just want to like quickly add to, there was so many people, so many kind runners out there that came up to me and talked to me about like your films or like daily brew. And it just, um, yeah, I just, I'm so, my heart is so full and it was just a wonderful experience and I'm looking forward to hopefully not waiting that long to race again. <laughs> it's not going to happen. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we are so appreciative of you taking the time tonight to to listen to the stories and to share in this experience a little bit with us. Kim, congratulations to you on not only a handful of firsts, first distance beyond 50 miles, first 70 plus mile distance, uh, first time like cumulative time running beyond 24 hours. hours. I mean, 28 hours, something like that. Uh, first time running through the night, through the next sunrise. That's always a really awesome experience for anyone who doesn't get a chance to do it. Like to run all day, all night, and then all day. It's wild what your brain does with that moment. It's pretty, pretty special. So, so many firsts, so many amazing things, and a podium, a third place podium. Fantastic job to the wonderful Kim Tishim Newberg. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, let's do a little recognition of the crew because, uh, as I mentioned, there were some amazing humans out there, GR crew members, and, uh, our GR crew of the week is probably going to be a handful of people because there were a lot of people up there doing awesome things. I'm going to apologize ahead of time if I missed anyone, because I know there was several people that came up to talk to me and I either didn't get their names or I may, they may have gone in one ear out the other yeah. at some point during the race. But I do want to give a shout out to Cheryl and I believe Cheryl distance PR out there this weekend yep. um, was out there with her partner, Brian. Uh, Mandy was out there. Mandy was super awesome. Ran by me earlier in the day and like yelled at me like, did you get your nutrition in time? So we've been talking <laughs> about it on Daily Brew. She looked awesome, super fresh, happy all day. Eugene, of course, who is in the chat, who um nailed the 100 mile distance looks super strong all day actually podiumed and then convinced another runner to <laughs> go beyond that runner's distance goal and that's how good of a person eugene is gave the podium spot away to another person because that person ran a couple more loops. um and eugene has had their partner uh melissa there and also tasminta in the chat amanda there crewing and pacing pat barry from bc she was incredible um she uh i ran a little bit with pat and pat i asked pat what her goals were for the day and she said to run a 50k she hadn't run one in over 20 years 20 years yeah. uh, and pat nailed her goal as well and of course scotty mckinnon in the chat there as well um scotty was going for 50 miles scotty hasn't run 50 miles before and scotty just like accomplished his goal and just was like i couldn't catch scotty all day he was running the hills and it was crazy and it was really really fun to yeah. see um i'm sure i missed people um but i will say this community is very very special we are so grateful for the gr crew um Bettina in the chat was yep. also there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm going to miss people. Um, we also, uh, Maria Delza and Tad also came out to help cheer and support as well. So shout out to everybody who is there running, pacing, crewing, volunteering. What a, what a special weekend. 
we are so thankful to this community because uh, you lift us up and you give us inspiration to do crazy, hard, difficult things. And uh, we're just so thankful for everyone, everyone who watches these live streams or joins us for our daily brew or joins yeah. us on Patreon or just watches a review and leaves a comment like it's all you're all part of the crew. So we appreciate that. Uh, that is going to wrap up our Ginger Runner live episode. 410, like 600 something. <laughs> We're at Daily Brew episode 600 something. Uh, Ginger Runner Live, 410. If you would like to join the GR crew and join us for tonight's after show where we'll go through this list of questions that Kim has, you can go to patreon.com slash the Ginger Runner. All tiers get access to the after show. Uh, $5 tier plus gets access to our daily live streams and just great perks all the way up. So we really appreciate you joining if you haven't already. Yeah, we'll um, answer the rest of the questions and um, probably do a quick gear rundown as well. Yeah, because we didn't do gear rundown, but yeah. we'll do that for sure. So thanks all for tuning in tonight. We'll see you in the after show. Go out there, train hard, race harder, be part of the hardest. Thanks all. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Ginger Runner.